Hey fellow animators, I'm Milos Czerny. Long time no see, sorry about that. But today we have an exciting topic. How to do a holding of a two-handed weapon in CAD, so both hands stay properly attached to the weapon. It will be a bit more complex and not very well suited for complete beginners, not that the beginners should stop watching, but better just keep that in mind. So we have this model right here. You can also download it for free on my website if you want. He is already holding a few things in his hands, but they are permanently linked to the arms in the hierarchy of the bones. Which can be alright if you know your character will always be holding those things and will not let go of them. But what we want to do in this tutorial is to have the weapon separated, so we have the possibility of switching the weapons for example, letting go of them or doing whatever we need. So let's hide the compass and the former weapon for now, together with their bones. We will not need them to be visible for this tutorial and they will just get in a way. I have this M4 weapon here, which is the main actor of this tutorial. I know it's not very thematic for a character like this to have a regular machine gun, but it's something. And it's a random free model I have downloaded to have at least something to show this on. Let's hide the character and its rig for now, so we can focus on the weapon. We are going to create a brand new CAD rig for it. You may ask, why do I even need a separated CAD rig? Why not just link it to the hand and be done with it? Well, the weapon or any object you want to hold in the hands can be quite complex. So it will probably require some amount of bones and rigging, so you are able to move all the parts on it. And we have a separated rig, because like I have said, we want to have a possibility to detach the weapon from the hands as we need to. You can create any rig you need for any weapon or object you have, but I will do just a very simple one. I will do just a pelvis, which will be my main bone for the weapon. Let's place it somewhere, where I would like the pivot point for the whole object to be, so probably the handle. Now you could resize and reshape the bone however you like to match the model more. I am not going to do that because it's not important for this tutorial and I have shown it several times already. But let's rename the bone and add one more bone to have one for the magazine. As I have said, you could rig the weapon however you need. You could have much more movable parts, much more bones and so on. For this example, I have rigged only the magazine because it's enough for the demonstration and why I couldn't just link the whole machine gun mesh to the hand and be done with it. I need a rig for it. Ok, so our two bone rig is done, we just have to skin it now. And that will be extremely easy because it's just one bone for each part. I have added a skin modifier for the main part and just added that one main bone I have. The same thing for the magazine part. Not even any envelopes editing or weighting is needed, because it's just one bone with 100% value for all the vertices in the separated meshes. If you don't know what I'm talking about and need more info about skinning, just check some of my other videos where I go more into detail of that. Now our bones move the weapon as expected. We can also enable display as box option for both bones to be transparent and not get in a way. Let's unhide the character and create a new animation layer for it. Let's name it weapon holding for example. Do the same for the weapon rig as well. And also, let's change the color of the layer to something we remember. Bright yellow for example. And copy the color also to the characters layer, so they are the same. It might seem unnecessary, but you will understand why in a minute. So now we need a pose, where the character is holding the weapon. You will need to set it up by yourself, any pose you need or like. I have already done that off screen to save some time, so I am just going to load the pose. Which is also a cat feature by the way. And again, the pose is not very important for this tutorial. And also load it for the weapon. However, we are of course not done yet. 
Nothing is linked or set up yet. Hands are not moving with the weapon, so let's take a look on that. First, make sure both of the arms are in the IK. If you need more information about IK and FK, check out my video where I explain the difference between them in detail. When the arms are holding on to something, they will almost always have to be in IK. Next what we want to do is to link both IK platforms to the main bone of the weapon. However, we cannot use the traditional 3ds Max link constraint with CAT. We will always get this error. I again explain this in more detail in an older video, so check it out if you need to. But basically what we need to do is to assign a controller for both IK platforms. You can find it here in motion panel. Find the layer you need. For us it's the last one. It has this little plus here. But that only shows for the currently selected layer, so be sure you have the right one selected. Select the root of it and click the assign controller button and choose link constraint. This new link params area will appear. Here we can add the link we need, but first let's freeze all the meshes so we don't select them by accident. We have to be sure we are clicking precisely on the bone we need. Click add link and add the main bone of the weapon. It will appear in the list. Do the same for the other IK platform as well. And now, if we move the main weapon bone, we can see that both hands are moving with it and are staying on the weapon. But this means we have two rigs for one animation now. However, remember that we changed the color and the names of the animation layers for both the character and the weapon. That's just how I do it, to have them color coded because now I know that both of these yellow layers should be always active together. Also, you can see that if I disable the layer, the constraints will not work. They are active only on that one yellow layer. If I disable the weapon, nothing will break, but the hands will stay linked to the weapon, so the animations don't match. That's why they both have to be active at the same time to have the correct animation. If I create a new layer for the character, again the constraints will not work, because they are only active on the layer we made them. You can also see that in the SN controller window. By the way, you can still move the hands if you need to. You can offset them and the link will still be active. You can notice that link constraint also displays a key on the timeline and can be animated. If you need to detach the hand at some point, let's say frame 20, link it to the world at that frame. Now if you animate the weapon, both hands will stay on it till frame 20. After that the left hand will stop following it. Simple. And that's all there is to it. Now you can animate both arms with just one weapon bone and link or unlink them as you need to. And also you can export the weapon as a separated rig into your engine and switch the weapon if your character needs to. All done in CAD. And that's it from me for today. I am Miloš Černý and thank you for watching.